Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this, uh -oh, this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education of Burnus Township. Um, notice of the time and place of the meeting was provided and copies of that resolution were forwarded to the official newspapers as designated by the Board of Education and to the Township Clerk. And a copy of the notice was posted on the bulletin board of the Board of Education offices in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Due to the public health emergency in the state of New Jersey as declared in Executive Order 103, the board will be suspending its normal meeting procedures this evening and conducting a virtual meeting. Directions for accessing the virtual public meeting were posted on the district website, www.bernardsboe.com. These same directions were also posted on our intended but unavailable meeting site. We very much welcome input from the public. Because this is a virtual meeting, public comment will be handled as follows. Beginning at 7 p.m., you can email btconnect at bernardsboe.com or you can text 908-292-3047. Use public comment as the email subject or the start of the text message. Indicate your first and last name and your address. This is required for your public comment to be included. Please keep your comments to a maximum of approximately three minutes if they were to be read aloud. No, no public comments will be accepted after item 20, board forum on the, uh, on the, of the agenda when that begins. Okay, so our first item will be the student representative. Is Jimmy here? Hi, if you just give me one second, um, running into an issue real no fast. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, everything's pretty good. Uh, kind of weird to think that it's like almost, oh, it's June at this point. And, um, you know, today we had a meeting with uh, Ms. Hudak, who's here, and some of the other administrators. And, you know, it's it was like, I guess, eye-opening to see the level of, you know, like confusion and level of like bureaucracy involved in terms of planning anything when the directions from every single level of government uh, are constantly changing. So uh, I just want to extend another thank you to Ms. Hudak and everyone else who's working super hard to try and, you know, make these end of year events happen. I think at this point, like uh, most of like the frustration about um, what we've lost is kind of gone and it's just about we can take what we can get and what we can't get we'll do our best with. Um, in terms of wrapping everything up, student governments is trying to plan the elections for next year. So again, still trying to find replacements uh, for us. And then uh, we were getting more guidance from our colleges in terms of how we'll be like starting early in a lot of cases or staying on campus throughout the entirety of the fall term. So it looks like everyone's just finding, uh, you know, different things that are ahead for their future, even though the summer, uh, June, July, and August are still really uncertain. And so, yeah, that's all from my, my perspective. Thank you, Jimmy. Our next item is to acknowledge the 2019-20 Teachers of the Year. Thank you, Ms. Gray. So yes, we're, we're very pleased this evening to be able to acknowledge our Teachers of the Year from each school. Um, I know that we had one teacher who unfortunately um, wasn't able to join us for a last minute emergency, uh, but I would like to share, uh, I don't know if Mr. Sampola is on the call, I'm trying to double check, there he is. I would like to share the opportunity with Mr. Sampola uh, to at least make the announcement of the name of the Cedar Hill, Cedar Hill School Teacher of the Year, Mr. Sampola. So at Cedar Hill, we are very proud and happy to announce that Mrs. Linda Noel Camper, one of our third grade teachers and, and uh, seasoned teacher as well, been with uh, Cedar Hill and Berners Township for a long time, is our uh, Cedar Hill Governor Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you, Mr. Sampola. 
So just one other comment. I, I'm sorry to jump back to the IT for a moment, but uh, please remember if you're not speaking to be muted. If you happen to have another computer that's turned on, uh, you may need to mute that one as well. We're having a little bit of an echo problem, but it seems like uh, that might have just gotten better. So thank you if you just muted. Uh, we're doing the best we can with a large crowd here tonight. Uh, so with that said, thank you, Mr. Sampola, and congratulations to Ms. Noel Camper. Uh, next up, Dr. Oliver is going to make our announcement for Liberty Corner School. All right, good evening. Uh, this year, Liberty Corner School's Teacher of the Year is Mrs. Tricia Bobnowski. Mrs. Bobnowski has been, is currently teaching kindergarten and has taught in the Burners Township School District for 20 years. Prior to, prior to teaching in our community, she taught third grade in Maryland, Mrs. Bobnowski is adored by her students and our families within our community. She is truly a team player and goes be above and beyond for our school. Her influence goes beyond just the curriculum she is responsible to cover, as she has taken on lead roles in our school, such as the Special Days Committee. This group of dedicated staff are responsible for helping to organize school-wide activities and assemblies. Our Golden Guest Day and First Ever Buddy Brunch are events and examples of Mrs. Bobnowski's dedication to our school. One of her colleagues wrote, there are many reasons she is deserving of such an honor. The first and foremost is her belief in doing what is right for children. She is passionate about her students and her teaching, making sure that each child gets what he or she needs to grow, not just academically, but also socially and emotionally. Mrs. Bobnowski states, I am honored to be a teacher, having a noble profession with the opportunity to impact children. I value them and hold their education in the highest regards. It is my goal to meet their individual needs of each student so that they can reach their highest potential. Schools should be engaging in our interactive learning experiences where students build positive relationships through character education. Students should be encouraged to take risks and work independently to build self-esteem. I encourage all of my students to, actively, to be actively involved in their learning process and I encourage them to enjoy and explore the world around them. I work to develop a positive and trusting relationship with each child. My philosophy is student-centered, with a classroom that is loving, nurturing, supportive, and meaningful. Our world is constantly changing. I too need to be an ever-changing teacher, adapting my teaching style, lessons, and activities to ensure that my students leave my classroom prepared. I want them to end kindergarten with a love of learning and to be confident to take risks. I'm inspired by Judy Bloom, who wrote, our fingerprints don't fade from the lives we have touched. Congratulations, Trish. You really do deserve this uh, wonderful recognition. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm beyond honored. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Tricia, and thank you, Dr. Oliver. Uh, next up, uh, Ms. Hosny for Mount Prospect School. Good evening, um, and I pinned our Teacher of the Year video so I could see her right in the middle of my screen, so I'm very excited. I am very pleased to announce Mrs. Laura Tonzatich, who is our Teacher of the Year. She holds a bachelor's degree in psychology from Loyola University in Maryland, as well as an MAT degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Laura began her teaching career as a fourth and fifth grade teacher in Springfield, New Jersey several years ago, and then enjoyed some time at home with her young family. In 2014, I happened to actually be talking to my neighbor and I said, I'm really in need of a teacher. Do you know anybody? And she said, actually, I do. And lo and behold, fate just allowed her to join our school and she was delighted to receive an offer to join the Mount Prospect Elementary School as a fourth grade teacher. Mrs. Tonsatich is a very highly respected member of the school community and is an outstanding teacher and educator. She's intelligent, dedicated, caring, and very motivational. Her lessons are creative, engaging, and dynamic. Her incorporation of technology as a motivator and instructional tool and for assessment purposes are unparalleled. Her positive attitude and love of teaching and children are reflected in the outstanding quality of the program that she maintains in Mount Prospect. As a classroom teacher, Mrs. Tonsatich welcomes the challenges and opportunities each new school year presents, and she makes every effort to connect with her students in so many different ways. Mrs. Tonsatich believes that incorporating social emotional learning into her daily practices helps to build her students' character and provides them with the skills to meet academic challenges. She is a leader and a role model in our school, serving on numerous committees, 
opening her classroom to her peers, and just always coming up with the best idea. You always think outside the box, and Mrs. Tonsitich always has those ideas. She's thankful for the friendship she has made with her fellow staff members and attributes a lot of her passion for teaching to the support she receives from her administrators. Mount Prospect School has a positive atmosphere and is filled with talented, dedicated educators. She's truly honored to have been selected to represent such an amazing community as this year's Teacher of the Year, and I'm so honored to give her a parking spot so close to mine. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great honor. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, Laura, and thank you, Ms. Hoseny. Uh, next up, Dr. Costa for Oak Street School. Good evening. Ms. Melanie Saki is a first grade teacher who has been teaching at Oak Street School for eight years, and the staff and I proudly recognize her as our Teacher of the Year. She is respected by her colleagues, parents, and administrators. She continually strives to meet the needs of all her students through differentiation, hands-on learning, while also addressing their social emotional needs. Ms. Saki is an extremely talented, caring, and creative educator. Walking into her classroom is a pure visual delight. It is colorful, warm, and beautifully organized. It is so welcoming for anyone who visits her room. Her students thrive in the classroom atmosphere that she has created. Several years ago, she introduced flexible seating in her classroom, which has helped to create a very student-centered learning environment. Her colleagues recognize her positive attitude and eagerness to help and lend a hand. They also acknowledge her willingness to take on many initiatives over the years that have helped to improve the school community and beyond. Her dedication to teaching has even taken her to Honduras each summer where she continues to inspire other teachers and students with her talents. The following quote truly describes Ms. Saki. It takes a big heart to help shape little minds. Throughout her years of teaching, Ms. Saki has lovingly shaped so many young minds with her commitment and passion for teaching. Ms. Saki states, I aim to build my classroom on a foundation of respect for ourselves, our classmates, our teachers, and our environment. Through this strong foundation, I hope my students feel loved and safe and therefore are engaged in their learning. It is a priority of mine to help my students feel empowered by the simple choices or the ample choices they are allowed to make regarding their own learning. Flexible seating provides my students with the power of choice and therefore instills a sense of responsibility. Furthermore, I, permit, I promote strong values and empathetic, kind actions through a focus on Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Happy Kids. It is of utmost importance that students leave my first grade classroom not only more successfully academically, but well-rounded, happy, and confident. Congratulations, Melanie. Thank you so much, Dr. Costa. All right. Thank you, Dr. Costa, and congratulations, Melanie. Uh, Mr. Teresi for William Anna Middle School. Yes. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to all of the teachers of the year joining us tonight, and certainly all of the retirees as well. Um, this year's William Annan Middle School Teacher of the Year is one of our school counselors, Ms. Lori Thompson. Uh, this is particularly an honor for me to present this to Ms. Thompson because I remember several years ago um, when one of my first years as an assistant principal, Ms. Thompson and I shared a morning hall duty. And at the time she was a PE teacher and she came in in the morning and started talking to me about this opening we had in the counseling department and sounded a little rehearsed, but she talked about all of the things that she wanted to do for our students and really was in touch with the emotional issues that a lot of middle school kids struggle with. And what's been particularly special for me is that being the eighth grade assistant principal and Ms. Thompson being an eighth grade school counselor, I've been able to watch her do all of those things and more over the last several years. So it's been a really incredible experience and, and this award is, is very well deserved. Ms. Thompson has been a staff member in this district for 20 years. For the first 15 years of her 
years of her career, she served as a health and PE teacher at William Adam Middle School, and then made the switch to counseling, which she has been serving for the past five years. Throughout Ms. Thompson's career, she has dedicated herself to the students, staff, school, and community. She is actively involved in school activities, a re resource for her colleagues, and a compassionate ear for her students. Ms. Thompson prides herself on helping others, whether it be as sounding board or lending a hand. She has a calming demeanor that makes people feel safe and at ease. Ms. Thompson states, I've been in both a teaching and counseling role at William Annan. While each of these positions presents different challenges, connecting with students has been at the forefront. Adolescence is a confusing time period in young people's lives. To be able to help them navigate life's challenges, help grow and discover who they are, and provide a safe space to be their true selves have been the greatest rewards. Lori Thompson, congratulations on behalf of all your colleagues at William Annan. Great job. Well deserved. Thank you. I am truly honored and uh, grateful for the support I've had for my entire career here in Burns Township. So thank you very much, everyone. Congratulations, Lori, and uh, thank you, Adam, for that. Uh, last but certainly not least, we have Ms. Hudak for Ridge High School. Thank you, Mr. Mark Karen, and congratulations to all the teachers of the year and the retirees. I have the pleasure of introducing Ray Schnell, who is Ridge High School's Teacher of the Year. Mr. Schnell has been a highly dedicated member of the Ridge High School Science Department for over 15 years. He always works in a collaborative manner as he looks to find purpose in all that he does with others. As a consummate professional, Mr. Schnell seeks to build strong relationships with his students, peers, parents, and the administration, always with the goal of seeking positive and productive outcomes. Mr. Schnell shares his creative energy and talent in the classroom, playing acoustic guitar and singing songs as he both entertains and eases student pressures. Adding to his comprehensive learning experiences, he can often be found working side by side with students in the year-round garden located in the courtyard outside his classroom. The bounty of his garden annually results in a variety of student-made culinary experiences. Ultimately, Mr. Snell is a role model for his students and his peers as he demonstrates his commitment and dedication to his, through his actions. He approaches each day with ease, purpose, commitment, dedication, and a respect for all of those around him. Mr. Schnell states, it is an absolute pleasure teaching in a district filled with fabulous students, as well as trusted colleagues and administration. I have always tried to put student learning first by challenging students academically through investigations that are based on real world situations, which do not have a prescribed outcome, and at the same time, allow them to be creative in their solutions. I try to vary the classroom experience for all types of learners to include hands-on activities such as planting a garden, engineering and building a paper cup, or designing a sustainable organic farm. Hopefully by creating an educational environment that invites students to the experience, stimulates interest, and allows for individual growth, collaboration, and creativity. We can prepare our students to embrace the challenges of the future because we are counting on them. Congratulations, Ray, and thank you for all that you do for Ridge High School. Thank you very much, Ms. Hudak. I'm truly honored. Thank you. Oh, congratulations, Ray, and, and thanks, Karen. Uh, so we're, we're really fortunate tonight, as, as we typically do in the month of June, to be able to recognize not only our Teachers of the Year, uh, many of whom are in the throes of a, a robust career. We also get to acknowledge uh, our retirees, those folks looking forward to the next chapter in their lives. So uh, we had many retirees, some of which uh, were not able to join us this evening, but certainly uh, we're delighted that some folks could. And uh, we're going to speak a little bit on behalf of those folks that could join us. And we're going to start off with Cedar Hill School, I believe Mr. Sampola and Ms. Vitali want to speak on behalf of a Cedar Hill School retiree. Sure. So um, Mr. Sampola and I are going to be speaking about Adria. 
Um, at 30 years old, Adria, unsatisfied with her job prospects, began a certification to become a teacher. She enrolled at Keene University and took classes there while working full time. When it came time to student teach, she was so dedicated, she continued to student teach, doing so pregnant with her daughter. She was determined to get her degree and become an educator. Adria did not give up her dream, and 10 years later, having earned both an elementary and special education certification, began her teaching career in Bernard's Township Public Schools as a substitute teacher. It wasn't always easy due to managing two children, Paul and Mary, and their activities, but Adria stuck with it, and the following year, Joe Malika hired her as a special education teacher at Cedar Hill, where she has been for the last 22 years. Adria has worked in every grade level from kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth at Cedar Hill. She's worked in the research room, in class support, as well as what I need, our WIN intervention program for Janet students. She was the special ed teacher who brought RAS kids and reading A to Z to our district through her desire to find an online platform that talked and motivated and engaged struggling learners. Now that platform is in all K to two buildings or, and students have access to. Thank you, Adria. She continued her education at College of St. Elizabeth in Morristown, and there she earned her Master's of Education in the year 2007. Adria has been a vi vital member of numerous committees over the years at Cedar Hill. She has served on the Crisis Management Team, Technology Committee, and the Professional Development Committee. For many years, Adria co-led the Sunshine Club with Fern Meglio. One of the special ways a teacher, and particularly a special education teacher, reaches a student is just being there. Being that reassuring presence, standing by when a student is stuck or stumbling. We asked some students about Mrs. DiGregorio. Their message was uniformly unanimous. I especially like this one because I could never pronounce in my 18 years with Adria her last name. I appreciate Mrs. D because she is always helpful and kind. You always helped me when I was frustrated. I appreciate you for helping me with my writing. I appreciate you because you are always there when I need help. I appreciate you because you helped me with my math every day. I appreciate Mrs. D because she is funny. We also <laughs> asked teachers about Adria and how, and they had equally kind things to say as well. Adria has always been a huge supporter of the fifth grade team. One of her favorite memories of Adria is how she took time to get to know each and every student in the classroom at the early stages of September and October. The teacher started noticing she would come into the classroom during project morning time and began pulling each student to the back table. She interviewed the students to get to know their favorite color, animal, food, family life, and any activities that they enjoyed. She did this to make a true connection with the students. It really showed how much she cared to get through the whole class and learn about each student personally. Even though she came in only to select few to assist as a special ed teacher, the whole entire class thought of her as a teacher in the room that they could go to for support, assistance, and guidance. A true co-teacher at heart. Another colleague wrote, Adria has always been such a dedicated and hardworking teacher. She believes in each and every one of her students and tirelessly works to help them reach their fullest potential. In addition, Adria has been on the Sunshine Committee and organized fun events such as the chili luncheons, end of the year parties, as well as making sure everyone in the school feels appreciated. 
Each year, she has organized the holiday collection for the custodians to provide them with a gift to show our gratitude. I will miss her greatly, but wish her well in her retirement. She deserves to relax and enjoy her family. Adria, we all agree. Your soft-spoken manner, your smile will be missed by Cedar Hill and the entire K-5 Special Ed Department. We will miss the love you have given each and every one of your students. It is now time for you and your husband to begin your retirement living in Manasquan, New Jersey, and most importantly, taking those vacations that you and your husband want to anytime you want, not just in April. Adria, best wishes, have fun. We love you and we will miss you. Thank you for all that you have done for this district and the students in the district. Okay. Thank you so much, Paul and Lisa. That was wonderful. I feel so loved, so appreciated. And I have to say real quickly, it, it's a team effort. Thanks to everyone that I worked with, the amazing teachers, administrators, parents and students. It's, it's been fabulous. And I, I, I always tell people lately that I feel like I won the job lottery because this Burnish Township has been such a great place for me to work. And I can't thank you enough. And I'm, I'm so appreciative. I'll miss you all and just best of luck to everyone going forward. Thank you. Congratulations, Adria. Thank you, Lisa and Paul. We really appreciate that. It's always fun to hear about people's life stories. So that was great. All right, uh, actually, I think uh, we have our next retiree from Liberty Corner School. Ms. Vitale is also going to speak about. Yes, back to back. So um, my speech tonight is to honor Valerie Bowen, and I am giving it on behalf of myself as well as Dr. Oliver, as Valerie is an instructional aide or was an instructional aide at Liberty Corner Elementary School in the Special Ed Department. Valerie is a true professional. She always thought of students first and foremost. She went above and beyond for the children she was responsible for, as well as any other children in her classroom that needed help. She assisted, supported, and guided students in special education, in general education, lunch, recess, and specials. She was always a cheerleader for the students and could be seen on the side of assemblies and performances rooting them on. I heard that even in retirement, Val seems to be keeping in touch and tabs on all the students that she once worked with. She is truly a caring person. The Bernard's Township students who have had the opportunity to interact with Val have benefited tremendously academically and socially. It is with a sad but a very sincere heart that the special ed department will lose Val to retirement. We wish you the most amazing new adventures with your husband Tom, your daughters Aislinn and Megan, their children and spouses, and of course your cutie patootie grandson that's on your lap I think still, Saul. Have a great retirement. We miss you and we love you. Thank you for everything you've done, Val. Thank you, everybody. I miss you all. I have been enjoying my time at home and uh, you can see me on Lion's Road walking my little boy. He waves to every truck and police car that goes by and probably your car too because he's got a fascination. But it's been great. I miss you. Good luck, everyone. And I do, I still have three more birthday parades for the students at Liberty Corner School to go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Valerie. Congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, we're going to shift gears over to Ms. Hosny and Mount Prospect School. Hi, good evening again. Um, Mrs. Guggenheim, hello. I pinned your video as well. I'm very excited to see you. Mrs. Guggenheim and I go way back. I, uh, we were teachers together back in second grade a long, long time ago. Um, so it has been my honor to, to write this and to stop myself from crying. 
Um, I have the distinct pleasure of congratulating Mrs. Marianne Guggenheim on her retirement. Mrs. Guggenheim began her career at Berners Township in 1999 as a permanent substitute and then was quickly hired as a fourth grade teacher. She also taught second grade for many years at Mount Prospect School before returning to grade four where she is now. Mrs. Guggenheim came to our district with a plethora of unique experiences. She worked in the Peace Corps in Morocco for two years where she taught preschool and worked with young mothers. She then relocated to Kenya and taught grades K, four and five for five years. The summer of her return, we quickly grabbed her up at Mount Prospect where she has spread her love of teaching young children over the years. For over 20 years, Marianne worked with students in a whole class, a small group, or one-to-one -one setting. She worked carefully with staff and other building administration to implement programs for all of her students. Her professionalism and proactive approach to her duties was always greatly appreciated. She shared her love for the environment throughout all subject areas, and especially when teaching her Roots and Shoots mini unit. You always knew when there was dirt falling along the, um, the floor that she's gone past. Mrs. Guggenheim taught students how to look beyond their own backyard and to strive to reach their potential in so many ways, especially internationally. Having worked with Mrs. Guggenheim as a teacher and administrator, I can truly attest to her dedication to her craft. She is a con consummate storyteller and always has knowledge on any subject. My motto when I needed some type of information was always to ask Mrs. Guggenheim. I always promised that if we had a trivia team, she would be my number one choice. Her students were always excited to hop into her class each day. She ran to her class with high expectations and with a multitude of love. Her enthusiasm and her tireless work ethic made working with her such a pleasure. She loved working individually with students, especially students who spoke English as a second language. She often became a resource for these students and their families, continuously searching for best practices and new ways to reach even the most reluctant learner. She always went above and beyond the expectations for the curriculum. She was a problem solver and always offered counsel to her colleagues. She's an active member in our school community. She was a member of our school safety team, crisis management, and my most favorite is the STEM fair advisor. She always got to put all the tables and organize, and that's not an easy task. Um, she would guide students on their quest to get the perfect science project. She's always a willing participant in such things as our pep rally video, school spirit days, and other community building activities. She continued to grow professionally by always attending staff college classes, and she always contributed to the overall school community. She is a role model for everyone she encounters, both in school and outside of school. Her colleagues have said many of the following, many of which we see on her Facebook feed lately, which has been really fun to watch. She's fantastic. She has a great rapport with her students, comes to school events, and has a beautiful warmth about her. Her laugh lights up the room. She's hardworking and dynamic. She has an enthusiasm and love and passion for teaching her students, and it's contagious. Her life experiences make her such an amazing teacher. She's one of the best teaching buddies and I always look forward to our daily chats and debates. I personally will always remember her connections to students and other teachers. Mary Ann is always the person who you would always come through for you no matter what. She was never afraid to be honest or to speak from her heart, even if it means disagreeing with me, but that's okay. I've learned many life lessons from Mary Ann and I'm utterly thankful to call her my colleague, but most of all, my friend. I will miss you tremendously. I know you will enjoy visiting your beautiful family and spending time with Tim as you travel around the world. And since we kind of live close by, don't mind me if you see me passing your house and waving hello, because I'm truly going to miss you. Wishing you all the best in the next chapter of your life. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. That was very touching. I'm really moved. Um, it's been a wonderful experience for me teaching here. I've met so many wonderful people and children and parents and colleagues and administrators, and I'm truly going to miss my time with you all. And it's just been a great experience. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations, Marianne. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, we're, we're moving on to Ridge High School. Uh, several folks are here with us tonight from Ridge and uh, Mr. Shello is gonna speak on behalf of a couple folks. Rich. Good evening and congratulations to all the uh, teachers of the year and the retirees. It's my pleasure to speak on behalf of two of our high school uh, health and physical education teachers, Siobhan Devlin and Barbara Erickson. First, I'll talk about Siobhan. I wish I could see her on the screen. She must be on the other page. Siobhan joined the uh, teaching staff in Burns Township in 1987 after completing her undergraduate studies at Eastern Kentucky University and her graduate studies at Ohio University. At EKU, Siobhan was a three-year starting field hockey goalkeeper, 
serving as team captain and was named Sportswoman of the Year. At OU, while completing her graduate degree, she began her coaching career as a member of the field hockey coaching staff for the Bobcats. In Burners Township, Siobhan has taught in Cedar Hill School and Ridge High School during her tenure. A trusted leader within the department at Ridge, Siobhan has always employed an enthusiastic and positive approach with her students. She often introduces a lesson with her signature welcome, good morning, beautiful people, and routinely greets an individual student or colleague with a welcoming, hello, sunshine. Siobhan is a strong advocate for a quality health and physical education program and recognizes the important values and attributes that can be developed through her teaching. She has been an extremely hardworking and creative teacher whose care for each student is genuine. In athletics, Siobhan has been an advocate for women's sports and has carried the torch of the pioneers in this movement that have come before her. At Ridge, Siobhan has held numerous coaching positions, including serving as the head field hockey coach for 13 years, the head girls basketball coach, and she also started and coached the girls golf program. Under her leadership, that golf team won five consecutive tournament of championships. And numerous team members went on to successful careers at some of the most prestigious universities in the country. She has earned numerous Coach of the Year accolades and has been named to the New Jersey Scholastic Coaches Hall of Fame. Additionally, Siobhan has been active as a high school field hockey and lacrosse official and has been honored with the opportunity to, to officiate multiple state championship contests. Ever proud of her Irish heritage, Siobhan is as competitive a person as one can ever meet. Whether coaching a state championship contest or playing a student when challenged to a friendly pickleball match, Siobhan always has a trick up her sleeve to gain the advantage. But as competitive as she is, she also has a great sense of humor with students, colleagues, and others. Her loud laugh livens up anyone's day. Siobhan, you have made a difference in the lives of so many students. I know that I and so many others as well are grateful for the opportunity to have worked with you. We wish you all the best in the next chapter in your life. At the same time, we are grateful for all that you have done for the kids. Thank you, Dev. A little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I've been blessed to come right out of graduate school and land at Ridge and spent my uh, whole career. So that was a really, really quick 33 years. So I must have had a great time doing it. Can honestly say that I enjoyed coming to work every day. And thank you everybody for your support. And I hope to see you around. Come out and play golf. <laughs> Congratulations, Javon. Next, I'd like to share with you a little bit about Barbara Erickson. Barbara Ann Erickson, as she was formerly known before coming to Ridge, joined the Ridge High School faculty as a health and phys ed teacher and driver education teacher in 1999 after serving in that capacity at Rutherford High School for 10 years. A proud product of the town of Belleville where she was a stellar student athlete, Barbara attended Montclair State University, earning her teaching certification upon graduation. Upon her arrival to Ridge, Barbara had an immediate positive impact on the health and physical education program. She brought great energy and enthusiasm in her teaching style and helped to revamp the curriculum throughout her career to make each more relevant and exciting to her students. Her lessons employed creative approaches to support student learning and achievement, also, Barbara related extremely well with her students and made them feel truly valued. She believed her chosen field of health and physical education to be the most important subject for students to take in school. Through her teaching, she advocated that having an understanding and appreciation for wellness, lifetime fitness and activity leads to a prosperous life and enables one to, to be able to maximize their potential in other areas. At Rutherford, Barbara was a highly successful coach of the women's cross country and track and field teams. She was named to the Rutherford High School Hall of Fame as a result of her success in those programs. But 
upon coming to Ridge, there were no openings in the coaching staff in our track and field program at the time. However, the fledgling girls lacrosse program was in need of a head coach. As an advocate for women's sports and given her ability to teach and connect with high school students, Barbara was encouraged to take on the role despite her lack of lacrosse experience. When she took the position, Barbara immersed herself in the study of the game. Under her tutelage, the Red Devils went on to become one of the top lacrosse programs in New Jersey. And in 2012, she was named the Star Ledger New Jersey Coach of the Year and was subsequently inducted into the New Jersey Scholastic Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Barbara has a very high energy level and a wonderful sense of humor. Her boisterous laugh can often be heard coming from her office into hallways near the Ridge Gymnasium. She livens the room when she enters and her colleagues and students enjoy their interactions with her. A woman of deep faith, Barbara considers two life events to be her greatest victory. The first in becoming a cancer su survivor after battling the disease when in college, and the second, when she and her husband, Brian, welcomed their son, Austin, into the family. Barbara, you have truly made a difference in the lives of so many students over the course of your teaching and coaching career. I have valued your friendship and the opportunity to work with and learn from you. And I have a suspicion that your teaching and coaching career may not be over just yet, but has simply moved to the next chapter. I wish you much health, happiness, joy and good fortune as we as you move forward barbara we will miss you thank you rich i appreciate the kind words and thank you to the rest of the administrative administration um i absolutely loved working at rich high school i think it made me a better person in general love the students loved my department the faculty just such a wel welcoming environment um and I look forward to hopefully getting back there and interacting with, with, with the staff there and the faculty um, and, and officially having a, a goodbye to everybody um, as opposed to the virtual. So thank you so much for a wonderful second career um, after my Rutherford start. I loved it there. And I can honestly say, and I often say this to students, try to find a, a passion in life where you can actually love what you're doing every single day. And I can honestly say driving to school every day was a joy and a pleasure for me. I, I, I always enjoyed it. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Congratulations, Barbara. Thank you, Mr. Shello. Uh, we have a couple more folks from Ridge High School retiring and uh, Grant Comer is going to speak on behalf of our next retiree. Hi everyone, congratulations to the Teacher of the Year and all the retirees. Um, tonight, I'm here to honor the retirement of Susan Kennedy as she pursues another chapter in life. I'm trying to look for you, Susan. Ah, I found you. Prior to teaching, Susan began her working career at at and uh, forecasting consumer products and performing business analytics. As a lifelong learner, she pursued a master's degree at Rutgers University with a concentration in mathematics education. In 2007, Ms. Kennedy started her teaching career at Burnus Township and has been with the district for 13 years. She has taught a variety of mathematics classes throughout her tenure at Ridge High School. And for the past several years, she has been the resident AP statistics teacher, oftentimes bringing her former career life and experience into the classroom. Uh, as I've just recently joined Burns Township community, uh, I wanted to reach out to some former colleagues of Susan's in order to gain a full picture of her dedication to the teaching profession. A couple former supervisors summed it up best and echoes what I have seen over the course of my uh, time in the district. A former colleague spoke at length about how much Susan knew about each individual child. Ms. Kennedy would often be observed asking how a student's day was, what uh, was going or how a recent performance went prior to her class beginning. Uh, it was in these interpersonal connections she found strength in delivering her instruction to students. This is further evidenced by recent student creation uh, honoring what she has done for them throughout the school year, which I won't ask you to share right now, Susan. <laughs> uh, when asked uh, what she uh, will miss most, Ms. Kennedy stated, the students and the teachers. 
It is apparent her commitment to seeing students succeed was equally balanced by the enjoyment of collaborating and working alongside an amazing group of teachers. Susan indicated she has no formal plans in the future, but perhaps spending more time in places she enjoys the most. Susan, I sincerely hope this next chapter brings you happiness and enjoyment for the things you love the most. You will be missed. Thank you. I'm going to just echo what Siobhan said. It really has been a blessing working in the school district and uh, and I will miss the, the students and I'll miss my coworkers. and it's been a great 13 years. Thank you. Congratulations, Susan. Okay, uh, we have one more retiree from Ridge High School and Ms. Smith is going to speak on behalf of this person. All right, good evening everyone and congratulations to all of the teachers of the year and the retirees across the district. Tonight we recognize Miss Kathy Vanderstad and now retired professional school counselor from Ridge High School. Kathy's incredible career in the field of education and school counseling has spanned decades impacting the lives of students and families by the hundreds. As a school counselor, Kathy served every day as the social and emotional support for her students, as well as an academic coach helping students through the ups and downs of high school. Kathy served every day as a post-secondary guide for all of her students in her care as they planned for college and their big next step after life at Ridge. She was there every day for the ups and the downs, the good days and the bad days, the highs and the lows of her students' everyday experiences. Whether it was for a crisis situation, hardships with family or friends, planning for a college tour in the spring, or stressing over an upcoming test, Kathy Vanderstad kept her door open for students to provide support and counseling for so many years and worked as an advocate on their behalf. Kathy cared greatly for her students, their growth and their overall experience. She was an avid reader of many counseling resources and frequently shared articles, sources, and information with her colleagues. She worked collaboratively in a department of colleagues within Ridge High School who miss her dearly and has impacted the Ridge community beyond school counseling as well. She contributed to the Ridge community as a participant on the Governor's School Selection Committee, a faculty advisor, committee representative. She attended sporting events, graduations, and was also a member of the medical emergency response team. She worked as a member within the Ridge Traumatic Loss Team and also was a member of numerous professional organizations such as the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling, the New Jersey Association for School Counseling, and the Somerset County <coughs> School Counselors Association as well. Kathy is also a talented artist, and she, adds her she added her touch to our newly renovated counseling suite last year as well, and she shares her artistic talents with her colleagues. She's an avid traveler, and the theme of her retirement party in December was fitting for her. We called it The World is Your Canvas. Kathy was looking forward to her retirement to be able to relax, refresh, and enjoy her ho hobbies. As her retirement was approaching in December, she also uh, ha had been awaiting this past fall for the arrival of her first grandchild from her daughter. We wish you all the best, Kathy, that the world has to, off has to offer as your new chapter is unfolding as a grandmother, a mother, a friend, and now a treasured Ridge retiree. Best of luck, Kathy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it's been a beautiful journey. Um, I miss all of you. And as you said, Stephanie, so beautifully, um, the new chapter of being grandma and artist, which I do full time during this, during this pandemic uh, season right now. It's, it's been kind of uh, scary, but I'm keeping myself busy. But um, thank you so much for your kind words. It's been a beautiful journey. Thank you. Congratulations, Kathy. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, so last but not least, we have William Adam Middle School, and Ms. O'Connell is going to speak. 
Good evening, everyone, and congratulations. What a wonderful way to end such a crazy year. I'm here tonight to celebrate Debbie's retirement after working in Bernard's Township since 1996. Debbie, you are to be commended for years of service in the Special Education Department, assisting us as we grew both in enrollment and programs, and this was not always an easy task. You helped all of us in special education for many years. You were my secretary during those first few years as a supervisor. As I began to learn the ropes, you assisted, your assistance and guidance was a great asset as I took on the role of administrator in a very busy department. I also remember seeing you quite often at high school hockey games because both of our boys played hockey together before they left for Colorado and the good life. I also, I can also speak for the child study team as I say they miss seeing you each day at Annan and also your daily visits to Ridge. Most of all, we really missed you this year during annual review time. Debbie, I hope you enjoy the next stage in your life and you find new meaning beyond work. Retirement can be the most meaningful years in life. You will get time to spend with your grandchildren, longer visits out to Colorado, and you, while you and Dan embark upon your continual mission work for helping others. You deserve all the best. May you find it. You truly deserve this time. Good luck, Debbie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jean, for those really kind words. Um, it's hard to believe I've uh, been retired since October. It, it just flew, as did the uh, 23 years that I was at um, in Bernard's Township Schools. Um, I just, uh, I do miss you all too. I wanna congratulate everyone tonight as well, but I have to give a special shout out to Siobhan Devlin and Barbara Erickson, who over 20 years ago were my girls' coaches um, when they were at Ridge um, in basketball, uh, lacrosse, field hockey. And uh, so you guys will always have a special place in my heart and I wish you both um, just a great future and uh, happiness. Congratulations, Debbie. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to take an extra moment to congratulate all of our teachers of the year and our retirees, those of us or those of you who could be here tonight and those of you who couldn't. Uh, we had several that could not, uh, Debbie Len, Judy Ray, uh, Tim Mooney, Mary Centuri, Linda McNally, Sarah Demeray, Ali Savalia, Renee Bacar, Mark Fabio, and Frank Baraji. Maybe you guys are listening or you'll, you'll hear a recording of this. So we just want to congratulate uh, all of our retirees, even if they you know, couldn't be here tonight. And um, for both of our teachers of the year and our retirees, uh, the board uh, does support uh, some gifts for you guys. So I just want to thank the Board of Education for their support. I know that normally when we're able to meet in person, uh, we're able to have some board members uh, present some retirement gifts. I know that they wish that they could do that uh, in person tonight, as, as we all wish. Uh, but I wanted to let you all know that the board uh, is having us mail you your gifts. So for our retirees, uh, you should be receiving something in the mail. If you see something that has a uh, 101 Peachtree Road as the return address, um, or maybe it's going to have my administrative assistance return address, I don't know, <laughs> but you'll be getting something. Uh, so we're sorry we couldn't do that in person. And for our teachers of the year, we will be maintaining the tradition of the dedicated parking space uh, and the board also supports uh, an extra personal day for you to find a way to uh, celebrate your uh, teacher of the year in, in your own way on your own time. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that and to thank the board for, for being able to support those things for you all. Uh, I really wish you all the best. Uh, for our teachers of the year, I look forward to to having you back. And for our retirees, uh, it was so nice to hear about your careers and accomplishments. And I and I truly do hope that you get to enjoy all of those activities that I heard about. So congratulations to you all. Uh, if you would like to stay for the remainder of our board meeting, of course you may. Uh, but 
typically we we do a little bit of a, a break uh, for a minute or two to give uh, those folks a chance to exit usually our auditoriums but uh, so I'll pause for a minute uh, if you'd like to exit the meeting uh, and that would include uh, everyone that that spoke on your behalf um, thank you all so much for being here tonight we really 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 enjoy this opportunity uh, once a year to recognize teachers of the year and our retirees so congratulations to you all and thank you so much for joining us tonight have a great night for those of you saying goodbye but feel free to stay if you like Nick, just quickly before everyone says goodbye, I want to say congratulations on behalf of all the board members. We wish you all the very best. Congratulations to our Teachers of the Year and to the retirees. You are loved and you'll be missed if you're a retiree, and we look forward to having you back in person sometime next year if you're a Teacher of the Year. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, I, I think the remaining core, or the hardcore, if you will, uh, are still here. Uh, that was really great. Thank you guys all for your support. It really is awesome, uh, the support that you extend our, our staff. And, and you can tell from um, everything that they have to say that they enjoy the privilege of working in Berners Township. So thank you guys for uh, helping us to celebrate them tonight. Uh, and with that, um, I believe Mrs. Gray you wanted to catch up on one thing. I do. If we could please just have a roll call, Mr. McLaughlin. My apologies for not calling for it at the beginning of the meeting. Ms. Beckman? Yes. Here. Ms. Schaefer? Here. Mr. Salmon? Here. Mrs. White? Here. Mrs. McCune? Here. Mrs. Woldridge? Here. Mrs. Korn? Here. Mrs. Richmond? Mr. Markarian? Here. Mr. Syatt? Here. Ms. Fox? Here. Mrs. Gray? Here. Madam President. Thank you. Uh, and the, the next item on our agenda is the superintendent's report. Mr. McCary. Thank you. Thank you. So um, obviously our, our big agenda item was to recognize our teachers of the year and our retirees. But I, I did want to just speak briefly to um, the issue of uh, end of the year events and the uh, process that we're working through as we make our plans and communicate those plans out to folks. Um, so we basically are, are obviously dealing with a <clears throat> unprecedented situation in many ways as we work our way through this pandemic. And um, as we go along, we are frequently receiving communications that largely take the form of executive orders, uh, or sometimes they take the form of guidance documents that are published by the New Jersey Department of Education. So in light of those uh, types of publications, I wanted to just share with the public that we are making plans and communicating our progress on those plans as they evolve. Um, and due to the fact that each of our schools, uh, especially our variety of elementary schools, each of them have their traditions about how they close out uh, the end of the year process and therefore Communications have been coming largely from principals to explain their schedules and how they're wrapping up end of the year events. What I have been trying to do is work with the principals and other entities to make sure that our plans are vetted. 
we want to make sure that we're looking at our plans through the, the lens of health and wellness for our students. So we have all of our plans reviewed by our coordinator of school nursing, who works with the local health department to take a look at the procedures that we are putting into play for our different plans for the end of the year, and also with the local police department to make sure that there are no issues with the variety of executive orders that uh, the community is supposed to be operating under. So in addition to that, we also have to take our plans and uh, talk to the Department of Education through their local representation, which is the Somerset County uh, office uh, down in Somerville. So we, we have to make sure that each of these plans kind of um, passes these sort of checks uh, so that we can ensure that we are compliant. And of course, most importantly, that we're doing things in the safest possible way that we can. So I just wanted to kind of share that with the public and uh, ask them uh, for their patience. I know that sometimes announcements are made uh, or you read something in the paper or you even read an executive order and it provides information such as day camps can open or daycares can reopen. Um, with each of those things, there are many uh, questions that need to be answered hoops that need to be jumped through, and we have to make sure that we do things in a, in a safe manner. Uh, in particular, I know a lot of folks have been paying attention to the issue of graduation, uh, especially at Ridge High School for our seniors. Um, Mrs. Hudak, I know I can see her on the call. So thank you, Mrs. Hudak, for your patience in working with me. I know that you and I have been spending a lot of time talking about uh, graduation and what we can and can't do, uh, and what we are, almost finished vetting uh, at this point is a procedure where we anticipate uh, being able to give students an opportunity uh, to have their photo taken on Lee Field on, a, on an individual basis for June 18th. So uh, I hope to have a final decision on that uh, for Mrs. Hudak uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've been working through the details of exactly how we would process the senior students out onto to Ridge Field to allow this to take place. Uh, and again, this would be for June 18th. And obviously, uh, currently we're, we're under a, a 25 uh, person limitation when it comes to gatherings. So we're trying to work through that aspect of this. Um, so we have a, a process that we think will work. Uh, it will require that we ask folks to, to kind of process through a queue, uh, through the Ridge property, uh, through the Ridge campus. Uh, and stay in their vehicles until such time that the student uh, would exit the vehicle for a chance to get out onto to Lee Field. Uh, you know, we understand that that isn't uh, an ideal scenario. Obviously, that's not what we want, uh, but we're hopeful that that's what we can do at this time. Uh, and when I say that, I mean for the scheduled graduation date of June 18th. Uh, as I communicated last week, we are very pleased to see that um, there has been guidance published allowing for a, a more uh, typical type of in-person graduation ceremony that could occur on or after July 6th. So while we may not be able to do what we really want to do on June 18th, we are planning uh, hopefully what we can do for June 18th and then going forward on July 6th or later, uh, we have what should be greater options. Uh, I know that Mrs. Hudak already put out to the public uh, the date of August 6th. Uh, Mrs. Hudak, if you could nod, not, not on that, I'd feel a lot better. Thanks. Okay, great. So I got the date right. August 6th. Thank you. Uh, so I, I wanted to make sure that we're communicating that and, and asking um, uh, parents of seniors and senior students to kind of pencil that date in on their calendars. Uh, I know that Mrs. Hudak has also been uh, meeting with the students, uh, talking to parent leaders and, and you know, really working hard to try to figure out um, what might we do on August 6th, what might it look like? And um, the one thing that I would ask the public to keep in mind is um, when we received the permission to have in-person graduations on July 6th or later, it was very clear that we had to do so within whatever the um, limitations were for persons in a gathering that are in place on the date that you hold your ceremony. So obviously 
Right now, we know that that in-person uh, number is 25. We don't know what it will be uh, in July. We don't know what it'll be on July 6th or on August 6th, for that matter. Um, so we're looking at various plans, and it takes a little bit of time to be able to do that. Um, we don't want to put plans out there and have to flip three or four times uh, in the way that uh, we want to proceed. So we're, we're taking some time uh, to try to make sure that what we communicate uh, doesn't need to be changed five times be between now and, and August 6th. So um, we certainly appreciate uh, your patience. Uh, and, and I know that uh, what we have planned for uh, June 18th is not everything that we would want, but we're, we're working hard to try to make it everything that it can be. Uh, and so I just wanted to share with you that uh, it's an ongoing process. We appreciate your patience. We know you hear about you know, other plans that other schools are doing. Uh, every school is a little bit different. Some schools are graduating less than 100 students. Other schools have multi-hundreds of students that they're graduating. So uh, the way each uh, school can go about this is gonna vary a little bit. Uh, so again, thanks for your patience on that. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that we're working on it. Uh, and for our seniors and their parents, if they can keep that August 6th date penciled in for the time being, we would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Markarian. So next we're up to approval of minutes. So can I have a motion, please? I, I think we have public comment. Public comment on agenda. I'm items. sorry, on agenda I items. scrolled down too far. My apologies. Um, Ms. Fox, do we have any public comment? We have one comp public comment related to the agenda items that I'll read. So this is from Jennifer Cherubini, teacher at Cedar Hill School. She said, I'd like to congratulate Linda Nolkamper and all of the other teachers of the year and Adria De Gregorio and all the other retirees. Great job, everyone. I'm sure that the board and everyone still on the meeting echoes those sentiments. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, if we do not have any additional public comment, now we'll move on to approval of minutes. And a motion, please. Mrs. Richmond, and a second. Mr. Salmon, and a roll call, Mr. McLaughlin, please. Ms. Beckman? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Mrs. White? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? She here? I don't see her. Sorry. Yeah, she's right there. I can't hear her. I can't hear her. Mrs. Corn? Oh, I said yes, didn't I? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think maybe your mute was on. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Sorry. Wildridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Madam President. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. Um, our next item is the Finance Committee report. Mr. Salmon? Uh, yeah, there's a few items up for a motion. So I, you want me to propose a motion or? Yes. Can, can we have a um, motion, Mr. Salmon? And Mrs. White. And if you want to share the details, that would be great. Sure. So the first item is um, a finances meeting, I think, uh, in a week or two. But so on the agenda tonight, the first item is a um, uh, standing item. The second item is um, the board authorization to go out for bid for the 2020-21 uh, transportation services contract for the district. Number three is the approval of submission of the science lab project of William Annan to the New Jersey DOE. Number four is the submission of the kitchen renovation project at Ridge High School to the uh, New Jersey DOE. 
Number five, six are, five and six are student services. Number seven is rescinding a, um, an item we approved on March 16, 2020, which appointed US Omni as the 403B third party administrator for benefits. And number eight is improvement of professional development expenses. Any questions for Mr. Salmon? No questions? Okay, Mr. McLaughlin, then can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Beckman? Yes. Ms. Sorry. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Corn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Madam President. Thank you. I think before we move on to our next item, Mr. Markarian is going to jump in to add something. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Gray. I noticed uh, at our last roll call uh, with regard to the minutes, Miss Richmond was trying to jump in there. I saw her hand flashing. Uh, I think she she wanted to correct her vote on that. Uh, Miss Richmond, do you want to jump in? I do. I needed to abstain um, for the approval of minutes. I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay. Sorry. I, and I apologize, I'm having some really bad video audio out of sync. So P, I can hear people speaking real time and the video is frozen. I don't know what the problem is. So I did not see your motions and my apologies. All right, so, so nothing about finance, right, Mr. Markarian? Okay, so then our next item is the personnel committee report. Um, the personnel committee will be meeting a week from Friday. Um, can we have a motion on the handful of items that are on the agenda, please? Uh, Mrs. Korn and Mrs. Wooldridge. And Mr. Mark, I mean, Mr. McLaughlin, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Beckman? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, our next item is the policy committee report. Mrs. Korn? Um, the policy committee's meeting on Monday, um, next Monday, so then we'll have a report then. There's nothing for right now. Okay. Um, and then our next item is the um, curriculum committee report, which due to some unforeseen circumstances, I'll be reporting out tonight. Um, the, the committee met on May 1st. Um, the first agenda item was a new course approval for a course called Tomorrow's Teachers. This course is intending to expose students to and build interest in the teaching profession. Three primary topics will be covered. Experiencing learning, experience the profession, and experience the classroom. Uh, Ms. Stotler explained to the committee that the Scotch Plains Fanwood District has been running this course for a number of years. The district, it, their district is moving to a rotating drop schedule next year, and Ms. Stotler will be following their district closely to gather as much information as possible as we prepare to move to the rotating drop schedule here. Uh, the next item was the summer reading selection. Um, Mr. Hunter reported that the uh, response rate for the final round of voting was very high, especially given the distance learning environment. Um, after multiple rounds of voting, the final selections have, were identified. Students will select one title from the final four. There are two fiction and two nonfiction titles. Uh, the students will also be expected to read any other requirements identified by their specific English course. course. The uh, two fiction titles that um, finished in the final four are Recursion by Blake Crouch, Fragments of the Lost by Megan Miranda, 
And the two nonfiction titles are The Great Pretender by Susanna Cal Cahallan and Killer of the Flower Moon by David Graham. The next item on the agenda was the scheduling timeline. Um, distance learning has created some challenges for placement into honors and AP courses for the next for next school year. The staff developed an approach to address all scenarios that a student might find themselves in. Across the board, the intent with each of the placement scenarios is to do no harm. Teachers will update their recommendations at the end of the year in order to provide students and families with updated information that reflects the distance learning experience. There are four categories of student course placement we anticipate. A student was not qualified it, qualified at the time of scheduling and is now qualified for honors or AP. That's category one. Category two, the student was qualified at the time of scheduling and remains qualified now. Category three, the student was qualified at the time of scheduling and is no longer qualified. And category four, the student was not qualified at the time of scheduling and is still not qualified. An additional variable to be considered is whether or not the student is coming from a CP or an honors or AP course into the next one. Uh, for each of the scenarios above, the student who did not previously qualify but does now would complete a change course request form by June 26th and would be moved into the requested course. There's no change for the student who qualified before and still qualifies. And a student who was qualified but no longer qualifies could complete a waiver form by June 26 to move back into the course. The waiver will encourage students to make a thoughtful decision but will be granted. And a student who was not qualified at scheduling and does not qualify at the end of the year um, may submit an appeal form as they always could and their extenuating circumstance will be considered by the supervisor. Um, there are some date changes relative to all this. Um, necessary teacher recommendation updates will be completed by June 19th. Um, one week later, change of course request forms and waiver appeal forms will be due, that is June 26th. Supervisor review of change of course requests and waiver appeal forms. Um, schedule change window will remain the same August 25th to 31st. Uh, semester drop without the W for withdrawal for fall is pushed back a week to September 28th. Full year drop without W is pushed back a week to October 25th. Um, level change or course change forms will be due by October 30th. And all of these date changes apply strictly to this year. Uh, and I believe this information is also available. Um, is it on the counseling page, Ms. Fox? Well, it's, it's in the program of studies on page 14, and then the links to the forms and that kind of part of the procedure are linked on the counseling page. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, you'll want to see the program of studies, and then if you would like to access a form, you'll go to the counseling page. Um, there are also some uh, revisions to the math criteria and placement. Um, so everything that I just mentioned does not apply to math. Um, this criteria was addressed separately. Um, fourth grade accelerated math placement determines will, determinations will occur in the fall. The fifth grade students meeting the criteria uh, for sixth grade accelerated math, math will, meeting the criteria to be eligible to take the end of year exam for the sixth grade accelerated math will be notified um, for the opportunity to sit for that exam and um, the date is to be determined. For Ridge High School courses, the standard criteria for honors placement will apply. However, students will not be required to take a placement exam. And then with regard to accelerated algebra one, the grade seven rubric um, was re slightly revised to reflect the absence of spring map test scores. Qualifying students and their parents will be notified by June 5th if they've met the criteria. Uh, the next item was distance learning update um, K through five. Uh, survey results were discussed and the responses are being used to shape decisions as we move forward with planning for the remainder of the year and possibly into summer. The K-5 report card update was also discussed. Um, due to the distance learning environment, the definitions associated with various elementary report card codes have had to be adjusted. 
These codes allow the teacher to report areas where material has not been taught or through no fault of the student, there is no available evidence to assess an approach to learning. Parents will receive details on the ad adjusted codes through an SOS Express. I think that went out. Um, and then the last item was uh, the comprehensive coordinated early intervening services with the very catchy CCEIS acronym. Um, Burnus Township normally receives a little over $1 million in IDEA funding. This funding is typically used to pay, out, uh, pay for out of district placement tuition contracts. This year, some changes have been made as to how subgroups are identified for early intervention services. Ms. O'Connell is making her way through all the details. There's a significant change that will have an impact on our district. Uh, white is now considered a subgroup and districts will now be required to complete a disproportionality calculation check on all subgroups. Due to the fact that our student population has a significant percentage of white students, our disproportionality calculation will be high. It is anticipated that we will need to develop an action plan to deliver additional early intervention services to serve the disproportionate population. This change will require uh, that some of the IDEA funding that we receive be committed to those specific services. Ms. O'Connell will continue to follow the developments with this change. The next meeting is scheduled for June 5th. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Then with no items to vote for, we can go on to the next item, Wellness Committee Report. Uh, wellness Ms. Committee met on uh, May 21st. Um, we started discussing counseling supports for students. Surveys were administered to counseling staff at the elementary, middle, and high school level to determine the frequency of meetings with students and to have data on the type of general work the SACs are doing. A big focus is getting the staff to have cameras turned on, helping them to feel comfortable, and getting everyone on board with doing live video sessions. Staff in need of support have been identified. Elementary staff have really been pioneers in video recording. They have recorded morning meetings, read-alouds, and personal video messages to students. Mrs. Smith has talked to middle and high school counselors about looking at options for video messaging and hopes to launch these after the long weekend. Weekly counselor letters continue to be sent via email. At the elementary level, individual and group counseling continues and the focus has become summer transitioning as it always does at this time of year to get students set to go off for the summer having had closure. Transition and articulation meetings for 504 IRNS and general ed students for fifth into sixth grade and eighth into ninth grade are taking place. Is a big focus um, is departure from the schools. At Ridge, discussion is ongoing about summer, but a lot is still unknown. Curriculum writing days are being set up, especially as daily announcements are made about what school may look like in the fall. How to advise juniors and seniors is at the forefront. Counselors will be getting ahead on college letters of recommendation. This summer, counselors will each spend one week writing these letters because the need to submit them is a known factor when so much else is up in the air. So it's best to be proactive and get ahead. Messaging will continue to be about summer opportunities for students. Many programs are moving to virtual online ones, <coughs> and weekly messages will be a way to push this information out to students. For juniors, college packet A is due the first week in June as always. The class of 2020 matriculation list will be coming out later as the college commitment day was moved by many schools. The hope is to have compiled the list of post-secondary schools by the end of June. It is possible with all that's going on that students' plans may change and finding ways to track this information is being considered. Seniors will be asked to fill in a survey on Naviance and indicate their post-secondary plans as well as provide an email address so counselors can contact them next year. Having these email addresses uh, will help keep track of graduates. 
The new SAC started at Ridge and it's challenging to begin this position virtually. Case load transitioning has been, go has been ongoing. Um, then we moved on and we discussed um, FaceTime uh, during so uh, social distancing. There is district-wide conversation going on about this and a survey was given and showed, shared that shows kids are still missing FaceTime with teachers. Ms. Fox has put together a spreadsheet by grade level and teacher of what activities are being done and went through the list at a cabinet meeting. It's really a small group of teachers that are not doing virtual FaceTime classes, none at the K through five level and only a few at the secondary level and administrators are working with these teachers to help them. The biggest issue is that since the live classes that are offered are not mandatory, attendance is low. It's not thought at this time with three weeks to go in the school year that it would be effective to make these live meetings required, but teachers are still being asked to keep adding new things and trying new things out. If we must continue remote teaching in the fall, there could be a different structure and schedule that addresses this issue. Progress has been made with counselors using video during student sessions. The longer we continue to be in this situation, the more accepting staff are about the possibility of this continuing into the summer and fall. Mrs. Hudak has planned two days in June for students to come together. Everyone would have the experience of a bell schedule, but with abbreviated lengths to each period in order to have closure with teachers. The plan will soon be communicated with parents. Each period will be 15 minutes. Teachers have been informed of this plan and tentatively June 16th and 17th will be when this occurs for about one and a half hours. WAMS is going to be doing something similar. Teachers are going to be paired up to do activities with their classes. Details are still being ironed out and the date is being discussed. A newly formed group, Return to Instruction Task Force, has been created and is considering what distance learning could look like in the fall, how to start with a new class when students have not met with teachers. This task force is hoping to be able to give teachers a schedule, including a bell schedule, in order to give them an idea of what the fall could look like. There's a new pilot program from the National Council for Behavioral Health that's being explored to determine if this is something that we want to use or incorporate into the Ridge curriculum. Um, we also are exploring what it might look like and the intent of the program. It is not intended for ninth graders, but rather for teens with a greater maturity level. There is training certification that would need to be done by physical education and health teachers. The thinking is that this could easily supplement current lessons. It needs to be determined if this is something we want to look into and if we do, where it would best fit. We also want to see evidence that this is a successful program and what ages are best suited for it as it explores initial first aid responses a team, peer, friend, reviews warning signs to all of the above, teaches a team the action plan of look, ask, and listen, and goes through protocols of resources to offer when professionals are not available. Topics related to mental health are addressed each year, so this program could add depth to health and even physical education. All newly hired phys ed teachers must be dual certified, which enables them to help teach topics related to mental health and wellness. And last week, we discussed the character education program at WAMS. WAMS has continued to work with the United Way and this year addressed three areas of focus with character education being one of them. There was a small pocket of teachers that did not really see the importance of addressing this, so time has been spent trying to get everyone engaged through a bucket of lessons to choose from and try out with students. A committee focused on character education has aligned lessons to projects for the different grades and it is a big undertaking but has been going well. The sixth grade theme is self-confidence, self-concept, with a focus on creating a comfortable being. The seventh grade theme is self-awareness and interpersonal skill, skills around them and close to them. And the eighth grade theme is how to interact with the community and how to find one's place in society. What the committee really likes about this, it is lets teachers know where students are starting and where they will be finishing. Mm -hmm. A lot of work has already taken place. Hopefully curriculum writing during the summer will be approved and this can be launched in September. Our next wellness meeting is scheduled for June 18th. 
Any questions for Mrs. White? No questions? Okay, thank you, Mrs. White. Um, our next item is the liaison committee reports. <clears throat> Do we have any? I didn't think so. Um, I, I, oh, the, on. Ah, wait. Go ahead. <laughs> um, that's go ahead, Jen. I, I just had a couple, I had an email um, from, forwarded from Caitlin for the Municipal Alliance um, from uh, the uh, the um, Family Support Organization of 100 Somerset and Warren Counties, and they're doing a couple of webinars. I thought it would be nice to mention them. Um, one with, on June 3rd, it's Navigating Through Grief and Loss, um, and it's presented by Jesse Bassett. She's a Director of Education for Good Grief, which is a, um, an organization that helps with children um, uh, work through grief. And it's Wednesday, June 3rd from 7 to 8 p.m. and it's an online webinar via Zoom. And it has, you have to register, um, you have to RSVP to a Ruiz at fso-hsw.org. And you can, um, you can probably go if, uh, to the, um, I'm assuming to the site, to the organization site to, to find out more about it um, at uh, the family support organization. And then uh, there's a changing language changes perception. And this is also part of the um, stigma free they're, they're trying to promote. Um, and it's learn how to have simple words, choices can, simple, simple words and choices can perpetuate or alleviate stigma. And it's presented by Heather Ogden, the Ag advocacy coordinator. Um, for NCADD New Jersey, um, and that's Thursday, June 25th, from 12 to 1:15 via Zoom. And you um, RSVP to the same person. So that's just a couple of um, uh, programs uh, in case people need them. Uh, and let me see if there's a website. Um, there's a web. The website is www.fso-hsw.org. That's it. Thank you, Mrs. Korn. Um, okay, so then now we're up to public comment on non-agenda items. Ms. Fox, do we have any? Yes, we do. So the first one is from Steve Glickman, 60 Battalion Drive. Given the financial distress and massive unemployment in the community and reduced state aid due to COVID, I think it is prudent for the BOE to cancel any renovation projects planned for Ridge High. Similarly, all expenditures within the school system, system should be reviewed and spent only when absolutely necessary. The BOE should reflect true conservative fiscal principles and have some understanding for already overburdened taxpayers. Um, the next one. James Vopel, 20 Evergreen Place. Good evening, members of the Board of Education. As I'm sure you're aware, the state's proposed cut of almost $500,000 in funding is just about official. There are so many unknowns moving forward. Now more than ever, the board must postpone the renovation of the RHS cafeteria and save our reserves for unanticipated costs associated with the eventual reopening of the schools. The board needs to consider the following. One, possible increased costs associated with reconfiguring classrooms and the hiring of new staff to meet the suggested six feet social distance requirement when and if school, schools reopen. Two, possible increased costs associated with hiring additional staff to cover lunch periods when students have to eat in their classrooms as suggested by the CDC. Three, possible increased costs associated with the additional, with hiring additional custodial staff. Four, Possible increased costs to meet suggested bus seating requirements, one student per seat skipping rows, by buses having to make more runs. Five, possible increased costs of outfitting all school personnel and with masks and or PPEs. Six, possible increased costs for technology infrastructure upgrades, maintenance to continue distance learning in September. This could include live sessions where staff teach students in real time at home. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We need those reserves to fund unanticipated and unforeseen costs. The board must exercise caution during these difficult times. 
This isn't about being pessimist, pessimistic. This is about reality and being prepared for what's to come if and when schools reopen. Please show the taxpayers some common sense. Hold off on the renovation of the cafeteria. It just isn't necessary at this time. On another note, I'd like to thank the teachers for their dedication to distance learning during the pandemic. Although the teachers would have certainly preferred to be in the classroom and the students too, they adjusted and made the best of a bad situation as best they could. Thank you. And there is one more. Paul Merrick, 58 Independence Drive, Basking Ridge. A few questions. What type of planning are you doing for the new school year starting in September? I'm assuming you'll be working up two different scenarios. First, in-person learning with new procedures and safety measures in place, and second, distance learning. When do you expect the plans to be complete and when will you be sharing them with us? Can we get textbooks for the next year? Since kids have extra time this summer, they can use the textbooks to prepare for the next school year. It looks, uh, uh, I think Paul Merrick just sent the same comment in a second time. So that is all of the comments at this time. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Mr. Markarian, is there anything you'd like to comment on at this time? Sure. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Uh, my apologies um, to Mr. Glickman and Mr. Vopel. Uh, those comments were probably related to the two finance agenda items related to uh, the science labs at Annan uh, and the kitchen renovation at Ridge. That was not Mrs. Fox's fault. Uh, I missed that. Uh, the connection to the agenda. So those could have been presented under uh, public comment on agenda items. So my apologies, gentlemen. Um, so just with respect to those comments and the agenda items, I just wanted to highlight that the two agenda items are not an award of contract. They are procedural requirements associated with uh, putting the applications in for the projects. Uh, and as we've discussed, uh, I think that um, the board will make a good decision when we're fully aware of our circumstances uh, prior to awarding any contracts with these projects. Um, but I, certainly uh, it's a point well made that there are other expenses going on uh, associated with the pandemic situation, whether it be technology needs, cleaning supplies and the like. Uh, certainly things that we probably have not even conceived of yet which brings me to the uh, second uh, topic uh, raised in public comment with regard to the planning. Uh, and absolutely, we have already begun to plan uh, for in-person. <clears throat> and certainly we can share that uh, some measures are currently underway, largely associated to the hygiene in the buildings and trying to improve the capacity uh, to keep things cleaner, not only with the cleaning regimens, but also with the supplies that are in classrooms for students and teachers to use. Uh, and I know that Mr. McLaughlin has been diligent in, in working on this. Uh, it's an ongoing process that takes time in terms of the installation uh, and procurement of the various uh, pieces of equipment. So some things are a little simpler to install and a little bit easier to obtain and other things take more time. But um, the goal has been to uh, install uh, paper towel dispensers in all the, the bathrooms that are touchless, uh, to install soap dispensers that are touchless uh, throughout the bathrooms and to install a hand sanitizer dispensers that are also touchless in all the classrooms. I know that some dispensers were already being placed around the buildings in various general locations even before we left in March. Uh, the other project that is a little bit more challenging uh, in terms of procurement and also installation involves touchless faucets uh, in all the bathrooms. Some of them have touchless faucets already, uh, but the majority of the bathrooms don't have that. It's a little harder to get those materials uh, and it takes more time to install them. So that project 
will be uh, longer in coming, but certainly our goal is to at least get it started uh, over the summer and uh, hopefully finish, but we can't promise that right now. We're still in the coordination process for that particular project. So some things already in place, and those are just some measures, not to say that that's everything, but we are planning on the hope, of course, of being back in person. Uh, and as Ms. Uh, Fox made known through the Wellness Committee report that you might have heard uh, a little bit about tonight, um, we are in the midst of a return to instruction task force to take a look at um, what would it look like uh, trying to get back. Uh, and our, our first step actually is looking at what it would mean to be out completely in the fall, uh, meaning that we were to continue this same distance learning scenario that we're in right now. And so um, that's our starting point. How would we do things uh, differently if in fact we had to, to open up without having students in the schools? In terms of the timing of when we would be able to share that information, uh, certainly we'd like to have some draft ideas, um, maybe within a month's time frame or so, uh, but we know that um, we're also looking for information uh, and we're trying not to put things out there that, that don't make sense. Um, so getting some information for us would be very helpful. Uh, and we don't even have any direction on extended school year, which comes even much sooner than September. Uh, extended school year starts in about a month. So we would like to know what's supposed to happen there first. And I think that that certainly represents a microcosm of uh, what might happen in the fall. If we can't get information about what's supposed to happen for 150 students, uh, getting what's supposed to happen for more than 5,000 students seems a bit daunting. But um, to the question, we are not sitting around just waiting for uh, September to arrive with no planning. We are working on planning right now. Uh, and again, uh, it's difficult when there's no goalpost set. Uh, we're not exactly sure how many yards we need to kick the ball. Uh, and, and, you know, we're doing the best that we can to, to come up with a variety of scenarios, but we're starting with the assumption that we're not back in school just for the sake of planning. And then um, we know what is supposed to happen when we're in school. So if we are very familiar with what happens when we're in school and we have a solid plan that builds on what we've done the last few months for when we are out of school, Hopefully then that'll put us in a better position if we have to try to figure out a hybrid between the two. Uh, and that's what we would be working on over the summer is you know, trying to get information that leads us to an understanding of whether or not uh, we're in some type of hybrid model and what that should look like. So that planning will be ongoing. And, and when we feel like we've got something to, to publish, if you will, uh, we, we will certainly communicate that we're really in drafting mode right now. Uh, finally, on the subject of textbooks, um, we really feel as though we need to get this year closed out and get an accounting of what books we have and where they all are. Uh, so we would ask for the public's help in doing that. Help us by um, working with your kids, looking around the nooks and crannies of the household as the school year wraps up for library books and textbooks and uh, help us get all of those things returned uh, as June comes to a close and then we can talk about uh, how we could get some textbooks out to students maybe around the middle of July is, is probably when we'd be ready to do that. We need to get everything back and quarantine it. Uh, we, we have been advised that a, a two-week quarantine period uh, would make the materials uh, safe and, and worry-free to handle. So we would like to take a couple weeks and just kind of uh, take bags of materials back from staff, uh, excuse me, from families, uh, quarantine them and then uh, organize everything uh, and then figure out um, a way to uh, potentially allow folks to borrow textbooks as, as we typically uh, have done. So I'm sorry if that was a long-winded response, but uh, good questions. Thank you, Mr. Markarian. Our final agenda item 
is board forum. Do any board members have anything for board forum? Yeah, you know, just really quick. I want no. I, yes. I do. I just really quick. I just have one little thing to say. I just want to quote the. I just want to quote the guidance from the governor real quick. And his quote was, "Sometime between now and a reasonable amount of time from now, you'll get guidance." So I can understand the frustration that the administration that our administration has because that means nothing. That's like that's like saying. Like that. I mean, come on. I mean, that's ridiculous. So that was a quote from our governor on our guidance for graduation. So it, I, 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 I feel for trying to plan anything. It's almost impossible to do and that's your guidance. <laughs> so, and it's frustrating to me because it's like, uh, it's almost, uh, it's disrespectful to people trying to actually do something to give that back when that's your quote. So. Uh, I have a couple Anyone items, else? I guess, that I forgot to mention before. Um, uh, I was fiddling around with Zoom in the passenger seat of a car, so I apologize for not being able to capture everything. Um, but I do have like an underclassman uh, friend who asked me a couple of questions, I guess, um, just bouncing off um, the idea of distance learning and then something totally unrelated. Um, so, uh, like I guess there's a lot of like disparity right now in between like teachers uh, teaching styles and uh, you know like the activities they do the like way they cover the content and uh, I think that distance learning I guess can um, you know make this like disparity between teachers even more distinct um, I don't mean disparity I guess in like a bad sense but more in just like differences as a whole um, so I guess there's been like a request to just generally uh, like kind of loosen um, you know, like the standards or like the, the need for sameness between curriculums when I guess like the structure of how students meet um, will still be very different if we are in an online capacity in some form in the fall. And then also another related subject on like the, the regularity of Zoom meetings. Uh, some teachers have Zoom meetings like every single day they like can, every like A day or every B day while others are more infrequent, like once every two, three, or four weeks. Um, so I guess just like, uh, I think that um, they wanted, I guess, a little more like attention uh, brought to that issue. Um, and just in terms of how, I guess, like to, to reconcile the difference between teachers and make sure that everyone's learning the same thing, uh, which might be more of a problem in the fall. But again, I, I know we don't really have many plans for there. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to bring up I guess um, before I said there wasn't really that much like going on in the past week or so. Um, in hindsight, reflecting, I guess there is a little bit more to add. Um, I think if you look at the things that are like happening in the world right now, a lot of students have become uh, concerned and are doing their best to bring awareness to issues of structural racism uh, in our society as a whole. Um, and I think part of that is just critically evaluating uh, everything I guess you do as an individual and uh, like as students, as teachers, as professionals. Um, so I, I don't think like, I think that our district does a good job preparing students to be activists and to stand up for what they believe is right. But I think part of that just means like critically evaluating um, everything we do and ways we can improve in the future. Uh, I guess we are like a predominantly like white institution. Um, and so I guess just uh, more awareness. And I know some other students are uncomfortable with their like teachers or administration. Uh, I have no one who's reached out to me about issues here, but I guess just like having an open mind and keeping that food for thought moving forward. So that's all I had. Sorry, I forgot to bring this all up earlier. Thank you. Um, anyone else? No? Okay. Um, all right, then. Seeing no other board forum uh, comments, I guess we are ready for adjournment. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Salmon and Mrs. White. Anyone opposed? I'm, I'm raising my hand in favor, Rod. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We we have all hands up.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a, have a good night. Bye-bye.